Hey everyone, we are back with another exciting episode of Above the Tree Line. Yay! This clapping gentleman is senior Yay! pastor Will Davis this Jr. This is so much fun. Hi friends, thanks Hi. for joining us. Thanks Hi, for Lauren. being here. Good to All see right. you, sis. Good to see you Let's too. Um, okay, so before we get started, I normally say this at the end, but I want to tell you guys in the beginning, if you like or even hate this podcast, we would love for you to leave a review. We want you to subscribe, we want you to tell, you, tell us what you think about it, what are we doing right, what are we doing wrong. You know, we can take that. That'd yeah, be good. We can take Please that. Do. Please do. Maybe be kind though. <laughs> so today we have received a question that we've received before. And the question is, how should believers deal with truly evil people? So <sighs> um I've done a lot of a lot of research on this. First of all, she spent a lot of time with me because right, the right. truly evil people just hang out with Will. Yes. And we're going to learn about the topic. So I Sorry. guess, like, in order to address the question appropriately, we first need to know when we're saying truly evil people, who are we talking? Can humans be evil? Yeah. Who? Sure, they can manifest evil. They okay. Can, they can be under the control of evil. They can do evil. Um, I think. I think. Y'all check me on this, that Jesus actually, and so did Paul, called people evil or said at least their deeds were evil. And so I think that that's awfully close to getting a pretty big failing mark in the kingdom. So, yeah, I think people can do things that personify evil, be under the influence of evil, and manifest evil in their lives. Are they actually... That's what I'm wondering, if they're actually evil. Well, ultimate evil is not a human, it's Satan. Right. But that can manifest his his activities and so therefore associate himself themselves with him and his and what he does who he is. So he, I don't think it's a stretch to say some people are evil. That's that's just evil. They're evil. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe maybe it's naivete, but I keep thinking every human being was knit together in their mother's womb, mm-hmm. created in the image of mm-hmm. God. Every human being is someone that Jesus would die for. I know some people would disagree for that, like right. that Jesus yeah. died for even the people who would reject him. But um, I have a hard time, when I think of evil, I think of Satan. I have a really hard time assigning the label of evil to a human being. So maybe we limit it to their actions okay, and not their nature. Um, but that image of God you spoke of was warped in Genesis 3. Mm-hmm. We're not, that image of God is muted. It is um, scarred. It's still there, and it's still evident in the world. But it doesn't, it doesn't reflect the full value of who God is, or we wouldn't have evil in the world to begin with. So our, the fact that a human can hurt another human the way we do, and it doesn't exist in the animal kingdom, hurting people for pleasure, tells me that there's something going on that's bigger than just us. Mm-hmm. It's a satanic battle, and we have the ability to hurt people, hurt each other more than anything else in the universe. That's evil. Mm-hmm. That reflects evil. And that, that comes to, that's born into us. Yeah. When we're born. So the image of God, I agree with your Psalm 39, 139 quote, but it's also been marred because of sin. So if if we're talking about people with evil actions, that can be believers and non-believers. Yes. Because Christ followers can, can do evil, evil things. Yes, they can. Okay. So the question is interesting because it says, how should believers deal with truly evil people, which implies that believers themselves are not evil. Hopefully they're not, but they, we have our moments. So let's define evil. Evil is not being having a bad day. Um, evil is wanting to do evil, wanting to do wrong for wrong's sake. It's it's really wishing pain on others and doing your best to create it. It's wanting to make people suffer. It's wanting to discredit the name and the glory of God. It's all those things. So it's not having a bad day and cutting somebody off on 183, which I've done. And then like, don't honk at me. I, don't you know who I am? Mm. That's having a bad day. That's being a jerk. That's Genesis 3. Evil is really wanting harm to people, helping to promote that harm, and celebrating it when it happens on an individual scale or a universal scale. That's what evil is. Okay. This is just... I'm going to go down a short rabbit trail for just a moment. We're only five minutes in, and the rabbit trail is here. Here we go. Now I'm thinking about about these people. I love to follow murder cases. Um, I follow... I watch court scenes, like, not because I'm going to murder anybody or anything like that. You're planning? No. (laughs) It's fascinating, especially, like, over the years, there have been these really big names in the media where it's like they will just stream their whole Hmm. court hearings, um, and people will often point to the killer and be like, that's an evil person. But 
I'm also like, are they an evil? If, if it was a crime of passion, are they truly an evil person, or do they just get caught up in a moment of anger um, and lash out? That doesn't make them evil, though, does it? So I'm going to say something to you, to you I've never said before. You may be overthinking this okay. just a little bit. Right. No, it could. I don't know. I think that that uh, there's actually different words for anger and for passion in Scripture, and one is an abiding, residing anger that's there all the time, and one is, um, it's almost the word for se- sexual passion. It's like this flush of energy mm-hmm. that takes the, gets the best of you. And God has more of the abiding, brooding kind of anger than he does, I lose control of myself and I blast somebody. But the actions, if I have a bad day and I get really mad at somebody in a fit of rage and we have road rage and I end up killing them, that's evil. Hmm. I may not be an evil person all the time, but that low moment in my life is an evil action. So let's define evil as anything that looks or resembles the author of evil, Mm -hmm. who's a father of lies, John 8, and who's a murderer. So deception and misleading and wanting to harm people, opposing the will and way of God, and wanting to bring harm, that's evil. Because that's what the devil is. Okay. So when I do that, I'm acting evil. One more rabbit trail, and then I'm going to bring it back. What about, we're talking about harming people, like physically harming people um, as one manifestation of evil. Okay, this makes me wonder, now I'm having scenes of like UFC fighters, um, like beating each other nearly to death. Is that evil? Um, I, I wouldn't label that as evil because it's, it's the rules of the game as they are defined. And um, I think if the guy goes down and he calls us, he calls for a submission, and the guy keeps pounding him, wanting to, wanting now to really hurt him. He's not competing anymore. He's like, well, I want to hurt you. I think he's moved from competitor to like mm. thug. Yeah, and that can become more evil. But I think the UFC fighting is just a sport. And guys, well, yeah, and that's that's one of the things that if you guys want to hear more about And they this, shake hands I, afterwards. Yeah, you know? but I would love to do an episode on combat sports, including boxing, <laughs> at UFC. Like, is this something that just, Jesus would Can you would and I condone? just get in the ring for a minute and just box? <laughs> <laughs> that be more. That would get more views. Okay, so bringing us As back you to this question. Me on my rear end. So I will say this, and maybe <laughs> this is incorrect, but just based on what I've heard in various like Christian communities, I think that sometimes maybe we're too quick to point our finger at somebody and call them evil because I see people doing this, especially in a presidential election year. Yeah. People pointing Boy, at these think? candidates and saying you are evil, and then Christians like God forbid the person they think is evil gets elected, Christians are like, are we supposed to do what this truly evil person is telling us to do just because they got elected to office? So I would say your assessment of them being evil is probably a little bit off. I would say you probably don't like who they are or what they do. So we're now we're into the topic of judge not that you be not judged. Because I can, I can say, you know, Lauren, if you... Um, are acting in a way that's really hurting people, and you and I both know you're better than that, and I'm, I'm calling you out on your sin. I'm not judging you because I'm exactly where you are, and I'm saying you're better than this. But if I say you've got a terrible motive and a terrible heart, and I think you're an evil, wicked person, now I'm judging you. Mm. And that's the difference. So to say behavior is bad and is unbiblical is not calling out um, diminishing somebody's value. It's saying you're better than this. Do better. Judgment happens when I say, you know, your heart's wicked. And you're not a good person, mm. and that's what that's what Jesus was talking yeah. about, and that's what's going on. That's a is really that Trump important distinction. Or Kamala Harris or Biden, they're they're evil because yeah. they do this, and I don't get to say that because I'm the same as they are. I can say I think those actions are not biblical, and they're probably not their best. I remember Joel Osteen answering the question about a particular sin one time, and the guy was trying to trap him, and Osteen just said, "I just think it's probably not their best. They can do better." Mm-hmm. He wouldn't go fall in the trap, mm-hmm. and because I'm not going to judge you, but the action is probably not you at your best. It's mm-hmm. probably not what God is. It's not God's best for you. So we got to be very careful calling people evil, mm-hmm. unless the scriptures do. Okay. I think we have the right to stand where scriptures stand, but that place is it's like divorce. The permission is really narrow. Mm-hmm. We can't go around throwing the word evil all the time because right. most most time the Bible doesn't let us do it. Mm-hmm. So what do you do with Hitler? Yeah, no, or that's Mussolini what, or Osama bin Laden. Idi Amin, all those guys. Mm-hmm. At least their actions were evil. Yeah. 
but you also know they were deceived and they were lost and they were under control of the evil one. And so I don't know if I can speak to Hitler's heart, although the evidence is really there. You're smiling. I'm sorry because I should oh, have your, muted com- your my computer. computer just went off. Somebody's already Jeff, commenting. Jeff, our sound guy, just looked at me like no, you some, didn't somebody's mute commenting. Your... What is this guy talking yeah. about? It's a live <laughs> thing. He's like, who is who is this idiot talking? <laughs> Shut him up. So yeah, so what do we do with those? It's your those... husband with a grocery list. Bring right. the milk home, please, and some right. eggs. Right. No, what do we do <laughs> with Osama bin Laden and Hitler and I mean, they're the list. I mean, in my lifetime, well, it, it was, um, oh my gosh, having a senior moment. You are, yeah, and you're The statue it's, it that happens. fell. Uh, yeah. What was his name? Saddam Hussein. Yes. Okay. As George Bush called him, Saddam. <laughs> Saddam. Saddam. Yeah, you know, do? Saddam is a problem. Like, do we, I mean, like, the churchy answer is pray for them, right? It's not the churchy answer, it's the answer. Oh, okay. <laughs> pray for them. Pray for your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you yeah. because you could be one of them. So, yeah, if they're living, then you pray that God will intervene and humble them. And I've prayed for people around the world that are pretty um, evil in how they behave. Mm-hmm. Somebody's got to, okay? Um, yeah, there's, you need to pray for people who do wrong. If they're past, which many of them currently are, are there's still evil guys in the world, things, guys who do evil. But they're, like Saddam, you know, he's gone. Mm-hmm. Um, Should we celebrate their death? No. Is that because, evil? Because they probably just entered into the into eternity unprepared. Right. So I don't think you celebrate that. No, I don't think so. Because because it is the will of the Lord for none to perish, but all to come to life. So if, mm-hmm. if I can't celebrate something God doesn't want to happen, so if Saddam dies, Saddam Hussein dies or is executed or whatever without the, Jesus in his life, that's a loss. Right. Because Jesus died for that man. Now we may go well. I bet good riddance. Well, that's right. Not the kingdom. That's not really the way Jesus. Me. So I have a verse here from Ezekiel. 18, 23. I don't spend a lot of time in Ezekiel, yeah, I say, but I came you. across it's, this You line. found the Old Testament. Um, so, as surely as I live, <laughs> declares the Lord, I take no pleasure yeah, in the death of the wicked, but rather that they turn from their ways and live. Yeah. Should we even be in the practice of killing evil people if one of the commandments is thou shalt not murder? Well, you just opened up a discussion on death penalty, which I think we've done a podcast on. We have on. done a, a podcast and, on it. And the Bible gives authority to governments to take life in war or as, as capital punishment. I can't take somebody's life, but my government can. And and so with biblical permission, because it's a form of reigning in terror in a culture. Mm-hmm. So I, I can't go do that. I can't cast judgment on somebody and take their life, but the government's have given, been given that right as a way of pre- preserving and protecting. There's some things that will cost you your life on the planet. And that's harsh, but it, but it's like the, the governments, have, if they can't, then you're going to have chaos in your culture. Mm-hmm. Okay, so... Well, we are all over the map. Juxtapose... Well, I mean, there's so much... We only have 20 minutes. There's so much to cover in this. Juxtapose the Ezekiel verse with Proverbs 11.10. When the righteous prosper, the city rejoices. When the wicked perish, there are shouts of joy. Mm -hmm. So Ezekiel, we don't take pleasure in the death of the wicked, but here we are in Proverbs that there's shouts of joy when they perish. So context, Solomon's quoting that as a king, and they would see, they would go take out the Assyrians or take out their enemies when David killed Goliath, Mm -hmm. and they'd been absolutely terrorizing Mm -hmm. um, the Israelites for 40 days and wreaking havoc. They're their arch enemies, and David took out Goliath in one fell swoop. You don't think they cheered? But should they have? I, they, I, I don't know. I'm not going to comment. I think that they were cheering over, oh my God, oh my gosh, God, look what you just did. Yay, our enemies have been vanquished. Um, I think the bigger picture is you don't celebrate when somebody evil gets hurt, but in that context, I can see why Israel would have cheered. Because you see this a lot, again, back to the courtrooms, when um, in the sentencing of the yeah. the person who has been yeah. convicted, the families are sitting there and they're, they are just waiting for like, okay, is it going to be the death penalty? Is it going to be life in prison? We want a guilty verdict on this person and the who harshest did this penalty thing. Possible. Yes. I um, and I do. I get you that get because that. I would be doing the exact same thing. But then you do have to question, is this right? Some people say it's justice. It is justice. Um, the justice has been given. So, so justice, another topic, is never as a Christian something you seek for yourself. It's always something you seek for others. Hmm. You let God, and this is interesting. You let God bring justice for you, and you try to get justice for who, others who cannot get it for themselves. So I don't go punish people. That's not the kind of justice I'm talking about. If i am been wronged, I let Paul said, don't sue other Christians. Just take the hit and let God even it out. 
okay? Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to seek justice for me. But if you're being wronged and you don't have the ability to defend yourself, I'm called to step in and defend you. That's justice. Okay. That's and interesting. So, so, but, so am I going to celebrate when a criminal is on death row and is guilty and has spent 20 years there and they get executed? Probably not. Mm -hmm. It's justice and it's probably right, but I'm not going to go celebrate the way that guy's life right. ended and what he did that got him there. Right. I'm not going to celebrate no, that. No, I agree. I don't okay. know that. I don't know that. Wait, say that part again. I agree. Wow. I think you're Look right. Look at that. Will. I think you're right. Yeah. Ooh. I know. I'm having a moment. Right? <laughs> okay. So here's the first time for everything. Here's another interesting thing. So I'm trying to loop in. We have a bunch of different questions kind of that we can lump into this whole conversation. Well, have we answered so, the question yet? Of what you do with the wait, other people? We're going to get there. Okay. Save Sorry. it for the end. Four minutes. Okay. So Save Matthew 539. Yes, ma'am. We all know this verse very, very well. I have Jesus no idea what it is. commanded his disciples, oh. do not resist an evil person. If anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to them the other cheek also. What does he mean when he says that? He means that Will's going to have a really bad day if he tries to do that. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, oh my gosh, there's no way in heaven. Let me give a verse Will cannot do. Okay. If somebody slaps you on the right cheek, turn to them the other cheek also. So like, hit me, baby, one more time. Oh my gosh! How did you ever work Brittany into this first time, podcast? First time, first time for everything. That, this, we just got an NC seventeen rating because <laughs> I think that has meaning. Hit me, baby, one more time. I think baby has has overt meanings that you don't want your kids. I think it's to. like poker. It's like hit thank me. you. We'll go anyway. with that. But yeah, so does that truly mean that you just allow yourself to get beat? It, by... I think it's a figure of speech. And although it's something he modeled when he was being executed, they beat the fool out of him, and he didn't call down angels to destroy him, and he could have. So he modeled that for us. I think the kingdom principle is you check your rights at the door, and if God's calling you to take a hit for him and for others, you do so. And if it's two, it's two. Now, if somebody's in my house at 2 a.m., and they're uninvited, I'm not turning the other cheek. And I wrestled with that because you don't resist an evil person. Yeah. Well... I'm going to go public on the record. If the yeah. evil person's in my house at 2 a.m., I'm going to resist them. So I struggle with that. But I think the principle is I'm, I've got to be okay being second or being last in the kingdom. And I don't, I got to be okay, in the words of Oswald Chambers, being a doormat in the kingdom. Ugh. You know what? My rights, this is where we're all about our rights. Right. And what I'm entitled to. Mm -hmm. And I think the scripture calls us slaves. To Jesus. And my rights really don't matter anymore. I'm, I'm his. And if he wants to burn me out in some obscure place and no one ever knows my name, that's his privilege. He gets to do that. I belong to him. So I think the, you know, that's, I think that's what the turn the other cheek, go the second mile thing is. You're second, you're last, everybody else is first. And to the degree that you can live that way, you should, because it's what Jesus did. He had time for people. He had prayed for his executioners. He did turn the other cheek. Hmm. He didn't say a word. And so I think that's in the context of the Beatitudes and the Sermon on the Mount. It's a kingdom lifestyle. We're not here to assert ourselves. So one ACF. -er, wow, ouch. Buzz kill. Yeah. Sorry. One ACF -er that you know very well it has asked me to address this on a podcast regarding this verse specifically. So back in Jesus' day, um, if someone was to slap you on the right cheek, they're backhanding you with their right hand. Okay. Um, and then, and that's like the sign of like, I'm higher than you. I'm backhanding you. And then one person says, but if they were to slap you on the left cheek, they would have to slap you open handed, which is a sign that they're an equal. Have you heard that? Never heard that. Okay. Well, we can take this up with this AC ever, but it was basically not saying like backhand me again. It was like, there's a, a theory that they're saying now slap me like I'm an equal if I turn my other cheek to you. Wow. Be so, fun to research. I yeah, have no idea. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. So truly evil people, in the if you are in the presence of a person who you believe to be under an evil influence, how are you supposed to react to them, treat them? If I'm in the presence of someone I think is truly evil, I'm going to leave. Okay. I'm not going to try to... I, Susan and I were in New Orleans, curiously, for a Southern Baptist convention mm. a lifetime ago. And we walked into a store, and we knew immediately that place was evil. We could feel it in the room. It was it was an incense shop or something. We walked in, and we're like, okay, there's something here. We left immediately. Mm -hmm. I don't feel... Um, I also don't think the soil 
of someone who's in the action of evil or living an evil lifestyle is particularly soft at that moment. And so I'm going to pray for them, mm-hmm. and but I'm not going to try to, hey, win them to Jesus at that moment unless right. I really feel led to. If I'm in the presence of evil, I'm going to leave. I'm not going to mess. I'm not going to expose myself to that. I'm not going to mess with it. I'm going to bless them and walk away and leave them to God and pray for a better day. Um, when there's people in the world that are evil, and I think there are, are manifesting evil, I really do pray for them because they're probably acting that way for a reason. They're not born that way. They're born guilty, but they're not born mean. And you become mean mostly because of your story mm-hmm. and unresolved hurt and pain. And so, or insecurity, like Hitler was probably the most insecure person mm-hmm. in the world. Dictators are typically insecure. So hypothetically, how should the Christian Germans have responded to Hitler while he was in office? You know, that's that's a tough question. I think, well, I'm, i I got to be careful because there's a lot of Christian Americans that are letting some things happen on our watch, and we're not saying a word about it. So i got to be careful judging my German brothers mm-hmm. and sisters. If they were aware... The, like Dietrich Bonhoeffer went so far as to try to plan the, the ass- assassination mm-hmm. of Hitler. Mm-hmm. Would you do that? I mean, he's a Christian. He's mm-hmm. a disciple. We, Bi- we read books about Bonhoeffer and discipleship. Mm-hmm. He was part of the plot to kill Hitler mm-hmm. and was executed for it. I mean, is that doing something? Yes, that's doing yeah. something. Did you go that far? I don't know. Yeah. Um, I do you think, still respect uh, them as an authority figure? If there's a truly evil person that has a seat in government. Uh we're supposed to pray for them, and we're supposed to submit to them as long as it doesn't compromise our walk okay. with Christ, as far as I can tell. Um, there was a point when the disciples said, look, you do what you do, what you got to do, but we're going to honor Jesus over you when it comes to this. We're going to honor you as our leaders, but we're not going to not tell who Jesus is, mm-hmm. even though you tell us to. And you, you do, every, every leader is there. God has allowed it, mm-hmm. even bad ones. God has allowed their leadership, mm-hmm. and he can take them out at any time he wants to. Mm-hmm. It's like David said, I won't touch God's anointed. Saul was right. a bad leader. He was a king. Saul said, I'm not touching him. I'm going to say that David said, I'm not going to touch him because God can take him out. So we're supposed to pray for him and honor them as best we can honor them. Yeah. Um, I, I would never call out the German Christians who were quiet because I don't know if they knew or didn't mm-hmm. know what Hitler was doing. Hitler or maybe cha- they were honoring their leader. He had changed the economy. He'd mm-hmm. been really great for Germany. He made them from nothing into a world power. So they're going, life's great in Germany. I don't know. I wasn't there. Mm-hmm. I think we're too silent in our country today, including me, on things we shouldn't be silent on. And that's as far as I go. Okay. She's trying well, to get me in a good. hole, and I can't get I'm right. not getting in the hole. No, I think you answered that very well. We're okay. actually two minutes over. So Shocker. Shocker. Okay, so... We sure love you guys. We do. We Thank really you do. so much for sending this question. Yeah, this that's is, great. Um, you're not alone in asking this question. We've received this question many times. So fascinating conversation. So many different ways to go. Um, but please, guys, continue to send us your questions at acfellowship.org slash podcast. They come in every day. They're yeah, fascinating. You. You I've so got a much. whole list of ones I want to address. Um, But thank you for engaging with us. Um, Thank you for sending us your content. And we look forward to receiving whatever you're going to send to us next. Bye. Bye, guys.